Hi, overall this tutorial is going to look at how we design PI controllers and PID controllers for systems with time delay. So prior to that we need to understand a small bit about um, time delayed systems and um, how we approximate the time delay in MATLAB. So to start off we're going to take the transfer function that we were dealing with in class. 961 yeah, delay 20. Um, so uh, to, to define the time delay in MATLAB, we use the string IO delay, and we ha and we then um, after that include the amplitude of the delay or the value of the delay. So in this case, we're defining a time delay of 20 seconds. Um, so our overall transfer function is again a 0.47, a time constant of 96s, and a time delay of 20 seconds. The problem with time delay in general is that um, both analytically and within MATLAB, we can't calculate things like closed-loop transfer functions if the system has time delay. So just to demonstrate that, if we use the MATLAB command feedback to get our closed-loop transfer function, when we include this function, it tells us there's an error, and this is due to the internal delay or the time delay. Okay, so um, if you were to do the same thing, if you tried it by hand, you'd find the same problem, that you'd get this exponential minus 20s appearing in the denominator, and we can't do much about it. We can't figure out poles and, and, and all that sort of thing. So we need to um, represent that by a transfer function. And the way we do that is by using a special type of transfer function called the payday approximation. So um, to illustrate the, the payday approximation, we'll start with a simpler time a transfer function where we just have um, one, um, sorry, where the numerator and the denominator are just one and it consists primarily of the time delay. So it's just the exponential minus 20s. Uh, we'll approximate that with a first order payday approximation. So the MATLAB command is payday. We're going to give it the name of the transfer function that we want to approximate and the order of the approximation. So first order approximation means that the power of s in the numerator or the power of s in the denominator it is 1. The payday is a special type of transfer function where we have both a numerator and a denominator. So it consists of a 0 here and a pole here. The value or the location of the zero and the pole are the same. In this case, at the amplitude of it is 0.1, um, but the location, the zero, is in the right half of the plane and the pole is at the left half of the plane. This is probably easier to see if we use the PZ map function, GS approx. We go to our figure. Okay, here's our zero at minus 0.1. Here's our pole, uh, sorry, our zero at plus 0.1, our pole at minus 0.1. And in general, what the payday is going to generate is a matched poles and zeros. So the, the value, the 0.1, is going to be the same, um, but they're reflected around the vertical axis. Um, the actual value, 0.1, is obviously going to vary depending on the amplitude of the time delay. So as this time delay changes, this value is going to change as well. We can, we're not limited to first order approximations, we can take higher order approximations. And we see the same trend, the numbers are the same, okay, but the sign changes. So when we look at the PZ map, in this case, now we've, um, because it's second order, we have complex conjugates. So the zero is at 0.15 plus or minus J 0 0.0866 the poles are reflected about this um, horizontal axis. So they're at the exact same locations, um, but reflected through the axis. Um, if we go return to our original transfer function now, and do the same thing, GS approx, um, and we'll go with a first order approximation, then our 0.475 results from the gain up here and the, the numerator, the 0.475, the 96 down here is a result of our time constant, 96s, and the rest of the function then um, is a result of our minus 20s. Okay, the, the, the approximation of that with the s minus 0.1 or the s plus 0.1 over the s minus 0.1. Um, 
so if you look at your PZ map for this um, AP GS um, sorry GS approx right. there's our zero from the time delay the pole from the time delay and this is the pole from the time constant the 96 so remember the time constant and pole location are inversely related so 1 over the 96 gives us approximately 0 0.01 um, or this pole here uh, we're not as I said not limited to just first order we can also look at second order approximations and the advantage of going uh, of using higher order approximations is you get slightly more accurate um, uh, you get a slightly more accurate approximation. So to see that if we look at the step response of the original transfer function, the first order approximation and the second order approximation, then because each of the three transfer functions is dominated by the time constant of 96s, um, the general shape of it, the exponential part of it looks identical. And that's what we should expect and the differences are to be seen down here at the bottom. Um, so the advantage of increasing the order of the approximation is this initial error becomes smaller so the, this is the first order the green one is the first order approximation the red one is the second order approximation and the blue one is the original time delayed system okay so um, as we increase the order of the approximation this error decreases but obviously the function becomes more complicated um, and that has a cost in terms of controller design that is going to be harder to use for example the root locus tool to design a controller for it so in general I would recommend keeping it simple and a first order approximation should work fine for our purposes